Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. Make sure you purchase this book if you do not own one already, you're going to need it. Today we'll solve the problem that you will find on page number 265. Page number 265 and today is our lesson number 377. 377 and the problem is 4.1.3. 4.1.3 which refers to the topic of segmented bar graph. Not the regular bar graph but segmented bar graph. It has, it's going to have segments. Maybe two segments, maybe three segments depending on the situation. Segmented bar graph. Let's take a look at it. First the data. We have to copy down all the data as it is given to us. Oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have erased the graph that I had in the previous video. It's the same blasted thing. It just has been segmented. I don't know why I wasn't paying attention. So let's redo it. So here we have the enrollment. And we're going to express that in thousands. And it goes all the way up to 8. So let's put an 8 here. Halfway through is going to be 4. Halfway through that is going to be 2, halfway through this is going to be 6. It doesn't have to be precise exactly obviously, but you have to be reasonable. You have to, you have to be reasonable as you do it. And here are going to be our colleges. If you look at the very first college, it looks like it has 4,000 students out of which 1,000 are part-timers. So we're going to use P to represent the part-timers. And we're going to represent the letter F for the ones who are full-time those who are full-time students looks like both part-time and full-time they are both hyphenated if you look at the graph that's how they spell it and I'm, I'm assuming that their, their spelling is better than mine so let's get going so we have 4,000 students out of which 1,000 are, uh, are, are part-time so let's first do college A 4,000 right here and of which 1,000 are part-times. So here's our college A. We have, let me do it like this. The bottom part that they give you is part-times. So let's put down part-times and full-times. And the college A, we find out is 1 plus 3. If you read carefully, that's what it is. Let's move on then. College B. It looks to me that it is four and a half out of which one and a half is part time. So four and a half, there is your five, four and a half is going to be somewhere here. Somewhere here. There's your college B, this was your A. And one and a half, which is going to be somewhere here. So in college B, we have one and a half, which are part times, and three are four times. Let's carry on. C is looks like it's a little under five, and looks like half of those students, two and a half approximately, if I'm reading it correctly. Yes, two and a half, about half the students are part-time, half the students are full-time. So as you see, we need to go all the way up to five, but not quite. So there's your five, and all the way up to five, but not quite. All the way, but not quite. There's your C, and two and a half, there's your three, Two and a half is going to be somewhere here. Let's make a note of it. C, two and a half, and two and a half. And you understand that these are all approximate value because it's very difficult to figure out the precise value from the chart. College D, we have looks like two and a quarter, just a little over two, are are part-times and the rest are full-time and all together we have about six and a half so let's first do six and a half hope we worry about it. there is your six and a half there's your college D and of which if you read carefully it's not quite two and a half to me it's about two and a quarter it's about two and a quarter so there's your two two and a quarter is going to be somewhere here so D it's about two and a quarter out of, you have to pay attention, all, all the way up to is six. 
is all the way up to 6, which means how many? If it goes all the way up to 6, 2 would have been 2 would have been 4. It's not gonna be 4, it's gonna be 3 and 3 quarters. And finally, E, we have it goes all the way up to 7 and looks like 3 and a half. Or is it 7 and a half? It goes up to 7 and a half. So there is your 7. 7 and a half is going to be up here. There is your E, and of which you have to be patient. It takes time to do this thing. I could have done it ahead of time, but then you wouldn't have gotten much out of it because the idea is to learn how to plot this thing. Because by plotting it yourself, you begin to understand the intricacy of it. Begin to, you begin to understand it intimately. Don't be lazy and just stare at the damn thing. Three and a half. So this is your three. Three and a half is somewhere here. So three and a half. And since it all goes up to seven and a half, this must be four. This is seven and a half. And now, if you like, if it bothers you, if it bothers you with your eyes, you can erase this middle part here that appears in all the other ones. We don't need that thing. It's gone. We don't need this thing. It's gone. We don't need this thing. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need that. There we go. It's all done. Now, we're going to solve a couple of problems. I'm going to ask you the questions and see what you can do. Here's the first question. question is, what is the ratio of, and we have no room to do the work. I take it that you have your data. So I'm going to erase this data. Obviously you have it there, and the beauty of this thing is you can always rewind it. Even if you didn't take it down, but I hope you did. We need the room. There is no other place to squeeze it. The question is, what is the ratio, what is the ratio of part-timers to full-timers for college B. What's the ratio of number of part-time students to number of full-time students for college B? And if you understand it, it's very simple. Part-time to full-time is what we're looking for, not the other way around. How many part-times do we have? We have one and a half. And the most common mistake people are going to make who do not take the time to actually analyze this thing is they go to B, they put one and a half, and then they, they end up dividing it by four and a half. If you divide it by four and a half, that's going to be wrong because they're not looking for the ratio of full-time students to the total number of students in the college. They're looking for uh, part-time. They're not looking for part-time students to the total number of students in college B. They're looking for part-time to full-time. Four and a half is wrong. They have one and a half part-times, which means remaining three right here are the full-times. It should be divided by three, not four and a half. And of course at that point it's very simple. One and a half is exactly half of three. The ratio is one to two. The ratio is one to two. Not it's not one and a half to four and a half. Let's do question number two. And for this actually we do need we do need the room. Question is which one do I erase? Do I erase this chart or do we erase let's erase this thing. It says, and this is something you have to do it yourself, it says arrange, arrange the percentages of part-time students from least to greatest in each college. Arrange the percentages of part-time students or full-time students from least to greatest which means we have to figure out what percentage of the total students are part-time in each of these five colleges and then arrange them from least to greatest. Why don't you do it yourself? Pause the video and do it yourself. See if you can do a uh, good job of it. A, we are told, A, we are told is one out of four. That's very easy. It's one out of four. That's 25%. That was very easy. B, we have, for B, we have one and a half out of four and a half. This time it's going to be four and a half because we're looking for percentage of part-time percentage part students in a given college, which means we have to divide the number of 
part-time students by the total population of the college. Total population of the college is four and a half, unlike the previous one which we just did, where we are looking for the ratio of part-times to full-times. One and a half divided by four and a half is exactly one three times the amount. Is exactly three times the amount. So the answer here is great, about thirty-three percent. Very simple, very straightforward. Because it's exactly three times. C is also very straightforward. C is two and a half out of almost five. Two and a half out of almost five. So this is going to be just a little under 50%, just a little under 50%. And this is only going to come in play, this is only going to come in play if we find another figure which is exactly 50% or another figure that is slightly over 50%. Then the knowing that it is slightly under 50% and not exactly 50% would come in handy. Actually it's not slightly under 50%, somebody should have corrected me, it's going to be slightly more than 50% because we are dividing two and a half. We divide it to and a half by a smaller number. It's not exactly five. Maybe it's 4.99. Maybe it's 4.95. If you divide by a smaller number, the percentage will be slightly more than 50. Can't believe I made the mistake like that. Okay. Let's move on. B. What is the situation with D? D. I should have erased the data. We said it was two and a quarter out of a total of six and a half. And a half. We're going to approximate. Okay, watch. This is where this is where the art comes into it. Well, let's just approximate. Let's just pretend that this is two and a quarter divided by six and three quarters. Watch what happens. Let's pretend that it is two and a quarter divided by six and three quarters. We're going to assume that six and a half is approximately six and three quarter. Keep in mind that the reality is six and a half. We made the figure larger. So whatever percentage that we get here. It's going to be a smaller percentage than the actual percentage, which means we are underestimating. Now we can clearly see that 2 is 3 times 6, or two, 2 is uh, 6 is 3 times 2. You can see 6 is 3 times 2, and 3 quarter is 3 times 1 quarter. In other words, the ratio is 1 to 3, or 33 percent. But are we underestimating or overestimating? Is the correct figure because this is also 33. This is 33. This is a little bit more than 33. What's going on here? This is 30, 33 and one-third. This is 33 and one-third percent. What's going on here? We are dividing. At this point, actually, it doesn't actually hurt to have a calculator handy and do the precise calculation because they do give you the calculator. Two and a quarter divided by six and a half and you will see that because we are dividing it by a larger number, because we are dividing by a larger number, we are getting 33%. In reality, it's six and a half, so it's going to be a little bit more than 33%. The question is, how much more? How much more? Which one is bigger? We'll worry about that in a second. E, E is three, three and a half over seven and a half. Three and a half over seven and a half, and we have to figure that out in percentages. If you want to figure that out as a percentage, we have to express that out of 100. So let's do that. This has to be multiplied by 100 because we want to find out the percentage. What happens? I'm going to erase this 33 because we need the room. Watch what happens. Let's first multiply top and bottom by 10. Okay, watch what happens. Multiply top and bottom by 10. If you multiply this figure by 10, top and bottom by 10. 10 times 3.5 is going to be 35. 10 times 7.5 is going to be 75. Now it makes our life easier. We want percentages. Divide top and bottom by 25. We have a 4 here, and uh, we have a 3 here, and a 4 there. 35 times 4, double of 35 is, is 70, so it's 140 divided by 3. 140 divided by 3, 12 has 4 threes, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 2, becomes 20, and 21 has approximately 7. So it looks like approximately 47%. This is approximately 47%. So that's it. Now my guess is that if something like this were to appear in the exam, Probably they will not. In it, they, they will not say arrange from least to greatest. They will give you the five answer choices, and they will say the percentage of part-time students 
as a as a as a as a as a percentage of the whole population of a given college, uh, from least to greatest, arranged in the order of least to greatest, uh, which of the five is the correct order? And they will not give you all five colleges. They will probably give you four colleges and leave one of, one of them out. And if they do that, we can tell right away that C is the biggest one, highest one. C is the highest one. Where can we make a note? C is the highest one. 50%, then we have 47 some percent, so that's going to be E. And then we have B and D. I'm going to put both of down down with a question mark. B and D together with the question mark, we have to figure out with the calculator. And then finally, A is 25%. So maybe they will give you only four of these five colleges, and the correct order would be C, E, and then either B or a D, whichever one they give you, B, C, C, E, B, A or C, E, D, A is the correct order from, oh, this is least to greatest, in which case you have to go in the other order because we have arranged it from the greatest, C is the 50%. But here's the, that's the idea and that is called segmented graph. But the, but the idea here, the key here is to pay attention that in the segmented graph, when they ask you for percentages, you have to pay attention, that are they looking for percentage as a total population or are they looking for when they, not the percentage rather, when they ask you for the ratio, are they looking for, when they, when they ask you for the ratio, you have to divide one segment by the other segment, not one segment by the whole amount, otherwise you will get it wrong. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.